يكي وخستيني التكت يوهان كن تشيش اتي اتي تشيش يا خي تي واساخت هو يكي اخانا تتكي اوش كت قو يكي يا قل التكت يا سنكي داني كا يا حتكي كا كتشاكوش كت قو Alaska kakh tao yat kakh tao yat ani kha kinji chuan ani tlach kinji chuan ani kho a kwe kha tlach de a yik usti shukat kho u kho a has de ani has de lish kho has has de dech khan ki yan ye awa adati tak de tan chatak ki ki awa دا سوي ها جيتا ساواتي ها ثيف كو هاس دا سوي هاس دي جيتا غختو تي يا ها دا جخن كي ين اجوي ها يوغتان كي دا جي جخني قوش ديخ ديس شك وخيخ تلنكي ديوغتان كي كدي هاي دي شك وطان ويخاهات اغتو يك اي دا یا هات واسگو هیچ کی که هس او وقت سنجی دیگه تنگی تو چه کدش یه وقی که یه دت هات واسگو کنی یه نخیی چه خیلی خیلی کاکستی سنجی یه آوا خو آخه دهیم اچوی یاد ای خیلی یه چکار تو نه یوهان کو تاک سخشوی ادات یه چی نه هیو قتنگی وان قنین سوش دخیه گفت تو سنت داسا اتو خویو قتنگ شگون اقا کخته هت هک گفت تو آق کخته گفت تو جاق اوه هایو قتنگ یه اوه هت واسکو کنخوی کاو دای اوه هخی نخ اچوی اخت واسکو تک گفت تو آق تک گفت تو آق یادس Displain away. A shoot. I ought to was a goo kaisha hit. Kaik a cook. Cha a do saji day it to a tea. Cha da sa da de to was a goo. Just cling it in a hoa. A ka away cook a hadis. A ka away sha nach dis. Sha nach dis away. Gwell jen caad ye gi awe yag gwachhi yi. Ach tu as gu we uski shkall ni gadaad ye ji yi ni. De kaw tu shik, de kaw tu jichit awe. Yi ye ji ni yi gwa. Tsu kak, tsu kagach yi ladaad. Aga kha kagach yi ni gwa. Kha kagach yi ni gwa. Glaid cha chynach, llingit a de, a cadw ni, i ddiw sagw ad. Gynnell chis, ach o a yw han i tywasagw yw chaill ad gi, ya i ddad, ke gwag e, e idch a, we chwch, little readings in llingit a da di jig ach tu ni. A ddiw sadi tywasagw yw chaill ad ni. ชาติศาสตร์ครับอักตุยานิคอ่าเพลทุสกูอัจฉริยะคือทักขวัสุสชาเกกันอาเทกักทุชีวุสดูวากิกินอ่านักทุดาอุสเจนไกลาชาติย
ye awe ye khakhwa wuz adata ya kai shikhit qayuk e watan wasa has to cut kawa ha et kash ishke ishku nik ye wa akhtu wasku ya khatu niku aya hatu dakhaya ya kandu jeli acha tasakh twa ishku atwa tu yai kasha ai das janak o tu niku kashati ne khauti ye awa ha ye jinei atu atu wa dakh aya kashi saku we on anakhya on the ganya ya akhu a we juno khu shadahani has kakakh to ak ya hasai aya ya an kakh so akade gakh to ti ya awa ha to wa ti da saye ha sa wa kha savako kasha to wa shku akaye ti Kasavako ani aya Klingit ani Kaada away we shkun Mayflower shkun you do a sock Kash ushke atawe wu hi hen yu Yi sai has to tawa suku to a kach A nachya an de gun ye shkun Ye awa has to tawa suku a hu a Ya an kini Ya ha ye ye jene tu na khaya ke kwak e ta kat kha khusti ya ha tat ki kha ban chish Zuk ya Et kha khida niya de shak qatan ha gawu and sheesh. Any thoughts or questions about what we just talked about or any language question? Well, let's do that first. I can recap certain things if you want. Um, see, a number of things that I talked about was uh, general sort of getting started. Good to see you. Glad you came here. Glad you are here. Uh, it was Indigenous Peoples Day, Shukat Ku'u Yagi. There's a lot of stuff going on here in the community in Alaska. Uh, the lower 48, I've heard it's Tao Yat Ani, uh, Long Feather Land. It's a pretty cool name. Tao Yat is also a Kaguantan name. Uh, and then I said also in Canada, well, the only way I could think of Canada was Ginji Chuan Ani, which is. Uh, King George man land. So I'm like, that's not a good name. So we said, well, the, the other indigenous peoples, like that, those peoples, their land. Uh, there are a number of things I talked to. I said, I'm always thinking about the things that our ancestors have given to us collectively, the collective us, right? who we are, where we're from, this is given to us. And what we're going to be giving to future generations. And that through our work, which is sometimes pulling things apart so we could try and get them to fit nicely back together, it's so that the language can start to flow. We really want to get it to this flowing stage. Let it be like a flowing river. And then for future generations, we're hoping it'll be easier. Uh, I've heard it said that Tlingit exists forever. So because of that, um, I keep working on it. I, I try and work on the things that I know I still need to learn. I try to work on things to try and make it a little bit easier to, to teach and for other folks to learn. And then, uh, I think that's most of what I said. And then Kayata uh, Cage gave a wonderful uh, example of language to talk about things that had happened. So I wanted to respond to that and say, I did ask you folks to write about 
terrible boarding schools and stuff like that. But I don't want you to feel pain, but I do want us to take that pain and remove it. I don't want us to pack it around anymore because it's not ours. So the goal is to sort of think about this stuff and use the language as a medicinal thing and to practice self-care and to take care of yourself and to take care of each other because they are dangerous topics. They are sad. They could make you really angry. But sometimes it's good to look at the things that got us into some of these situations. And because of the work that we're doing, some things are happening. There's a movement going on to rename this place where we were gathering uh, a couple weeks ago. That is called Savico Park and other things right now. And there's a movement to put the Tlingit name back onto the land. And that's an exciting thing. And that school, where quite a few bad things happen to indigenous children, wants to re-identify itself. And, and, and they've asked permission from the Akkwan to use that name as well, to put onto their school. And to be part of a healing process for a lot of people. So those are the things that I was talking about, and that's um, just to sort of get us, get us going. Any thoughts or questions before we go in? And I say, oh, I also explained to you guys homework in Tlingit. So you're going to write a one-page letter to whoever you want, about whatever you want. And I said you're going to translate a little story. Chaka uh, Dunik would be a translation. So Chaka Gachinik. You're going to translate it. Uh, and I also said you're going to retype it. I said that too. Um, then I said we're going to work on little readings and Tlingit and a few other things this evening. Any thoughts, questions, anything else in your mind? Where did you get a short story again? I will put them on our class webpage tonight. Um, they are. If you're ever curious, uh, if you're ever just sitting around saying, I'm bored, I need more Tlingit stuff to do, uh, you go to clinkitlanguage.com and click on this curriculum button. You go down here, and this is Clinkit curriculum. This will take you to a Google folder that has Pretty much everything I've ever gathered and developed, every slideshow I've used to teach Tlingit, every book I've ever found that has Tlingit, every illustration I've ever made, every stock photo I've ever uh, purchased and downloaded, anything that anybody's ever shared with me, uh, it's in here. I try to have an organizational system, but to be honest, my organizational system is usually stuff in a drawer. <laughs> I try to do a little bit more than that. Uh, so if you go down, there's a whole bunch of, like, just go look around. There's games, and if you know stuff that's not here, tell me about it, and I'll try to get it and put it here. My goal is not to claim this stuff as my own. Some people have accused me of that. They could think whatever they want. My goal is to make sure it's accessible. Make sure we can find it. Make sure we know what we have so we know what kinds of things we should make next. So if you go down to, uh, here's languages and uh, images and illustrations. If you click on that, here's uh, all the illustrations I've made. Uh, and if you go up, there's one called Beginning Clinket Images. Here's all the images in the Beginning Clinket Workbook. Do what you want with them. Make stuff, do stuff, whatever. Uh, also, there's this one section called uh, tech. Oh, well, there's one called slideshows. That's where I put every slideshow I used to teach. I'm trying to get better. Sometimes I use real big images because I'm in a hurry. And then a slideshow is like 180 megabytes or something. So I'm trying to figure out how to downsize some of those. I think on Thursday, we'll look at one called opposites. It's really fun. But if you go to texts, these are alphabetical according to who uh, publish them, if, if I know. 
So here's, uh, you go back to Franz Boas if you want. James Cribben has got some amazing stuff. Uh, he's a fabulous linguist who works in Tlingit. Uh, it's not, it's pretty deep. It's like a deep dive into Tlingit and the linguistic side of it. If you click on Downhower, you'll find some things by Nora and Richard Downhower. Uh, go check it out. Vesta Dominix, Frederico de Laguna. If you want to have uh, Under Mount St. Elias, all three volumes, you can find them online, but they're also right here. Uh, Emmons, that big, the Clinket Indians book. Uh, I got my stuff in here. Anything that I've done, you can check it out. Even like draft stuff I've got in there, stuff I'm currently working on that I'll finish someday. And then I got this one I just call it Old Texts for Retype. That's where this one is, but I will put a link to it. So what I do is... Uh, Usually, every night, I go down here to Intermediate Clinkit, and the way I like to do this is I just I put uh, the date, the content, the stuff that we went over or that I talked about that you should go look at, and I'll just put a link to it right there. I usually put the chat there as well. Sometimes I forget, uh, but just so we have it, and if I make any class notes, I try to put them on there as well. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts? What's that? It should be shareable for everybody. Okay. You cannot delete or add things to it, though. So you can be a viewer, but not an editor. Because if some get lost, I just, I have a hard enough time keeping track of things. But the whole idea is really there's that Google folder, and then there's a blog, and those things link to, to each other. And there's, some, there's a lot of broken links and stuff. Someday I'll fix them. But if you find them, let me know, and then I'll fix them because you're looking for them. Okay. Is there one class? I have this, uh, a prayer that I created with Keishi Ka Nachlahash. But I know, like, usually if you have a prayer, you need to have something to, like, close it out after, too. So, um... How would that work about, like, because I only have one prayer, but I want to share it at some point, but, you know, like, it's better in the beginning or in the end. And it's a smudging prayer. Oh, yeah? So I was just wondering how that would work, like, with smudging in this building and stuff like that. Or if we're able to do those things. Well, we could, uh, that's a good question. We'd probably have to take it outside. Uh, but we could certainly meet outside and set up some gear and do it sort of under... I don't think there's very many classes on that side, so we could just go right under the, the sort of, whatever you call it. What do you call it? Yeah, yeah over, over by the library. Yeah. So we could do it outside, and then we can come inside. Okay. Uh, and then we could also talk about it, too. We could talk about, there are kind of two main roads when it comes to prayer and Tlingit. And there's the prayers before Christianity, and then there's the prayers that are also trying to model themselves after that. And then there's the prayers that are Christian prayers translated into Tlingit or modeled after those. And we could talk about both of those and generally how they work. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, I'll check there. But yeah, we could certainly do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because I have I created that prayer and I'd, I'd love to share it and like make it so it's accessible to everyone too. Because it's a beautiful prayer. It's really long though. Yeah. So. There's chi. I do think I have, I have one called like Christianity, and I have one called spirituality. As far as like folders, okay. That's where I usually put that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, because in the be very beginning of me learning the language, I just focused a lot on prayers. Huh. You learn so much just from so much vocab from prayers. Okay. Awesome. Goodness, chi. Are you putting that in there right now? I'm gonna go run to it. <laughs> in prayer. Uh, we could. When do you folks want to do? You want to do it on Thursday? Just meet outside, and we'll probably do. I'll see. I think my computer should be fine. It handles the cold. It's not that cold, but um, 
Yeah, so maybe what we'll do is we'll start out there, then I'll pause everything, then we'll migrate back in. You know, they're just putting away all the robes that were brought out. And a lot of those robes, they have life in it, and they're old ones. And I thought about that and said, man, somebody needs to say something, because now they're putting all the robes back in the shelves, and uh, they're, they're being put away again. Oh, wow. And it just seems like, you know, we could say something. We could, you know, say a prayer for if it is at the end and being put away again. Just would be nice to say something for that. Goodness, Jesus, though, thank you. Ah, okay. Yeah, and we could do it at the combined class as well. Um, and maybe not have the sage part. Okay. Okay. And good ideas, I think, talking to at ooh and talking. Like, to be honest, in Tlingit, you talk to everything. See a porcupine, talk to that thing. See a deer, talk to that thing. See a bear, talk to that thing. So, um, yeah, and we can talk, we'll talk more about that kind of language as well. It kind of fits into this, this whole spiritual realm of using Tlingit, which is, uh, regardless of what you believe, we can sort of look at like here's here's the way it was done, and here's these other things that are going on as well. Okay. Okay. Let's read a few sentences. I think unless there's anything else. Okay. Did we do this one? Oh. Long time. Uh, I think we did. Do we do this one? Like, okay, that's where we left off. Can I get someone to read the top sentence? Huh? Ah. Shakas yeku ah ka. Sheesh. Uh, well, actually, why don't you do the bottom one? Anka de gugwagut. Sheesh. Shakas yeku ah ka. Everybody, shakasiek achkashk. Shakasiek achkashk. An kadek kogut. An kadek kogut. So, what do we got for the first part? Is it my niece? Yes. And what is the kashk? doing specifically as, as far as a niece goes. Is it? Well, kashk, like as opposed to kashk. Those are both niece, right? Or nephew. The, the, the kinship term itself does not have gender associated with it. Kashk and kashk. How would you know which one to use? Is that maternal or paternal? That's the key. If it's your brother's child or your sister's child. Yes. So historically, people would typically marry into the opposite moiety. We call them opposite or kodnet kanai in Tlingit, achkaniyan. So your brother's children should be your clan opposite. So Kashk is a niece or nephew, of the opposite moiety. Your eagle, their raven. Your wolf, their crow. Your crow, their wolf. Your raven, their eagle. Kashk, same moiety. That gets us to Shakasyek. Got a picture. Uh, comb. We also have a dictionary. If we don't know this one, what are we going to look up? Shah's head. Shah's head. Surface. Ka is surface, so those are both nouns built onto the verb. Yuk is the verb for that? Or? Yeah, so this is going to get us to 
Uh, this would be the classifier. We're going to figure out something that's going on with that. And then that leaves us with this part. That's what we look up. So let's go look. Let's go see what we could find. We're going to go to the verb dictionary. Oh, where'd it go? Right here? No. Okay. So we're going to go down to the Clinkett English section. And let's just go look up Y E I K W. And there's a Y E I K, and there's two of them, but there's no W on there. There's also none of these that have SH. So, we there is a suffix on here, but we're not going, so we could look up yay, because maybe there's yay, and then there's a suffix, but there's no yay. However, if we go down, there is a ya. So, sh, k, z, ya to comb hair. So we're going to go look up comb, and then I'm going to tell you why it's not ya anymore. So here we are, call, celebrate, cheat, choose, claim, um, close, club, coil, color, comb. So we have hey do teen shakau ya and shakau ya So this tells you that there's a subject in there. So there's me, I combed my hair. There's uh, a they, they comb their hair with a comb. And now we're going to go look this up in the verb database just to sort of try and get a little bit more information about this verb. So we go here, we're going to go down to ya and see if it's here. So here's ya, resemble or look like, maybe it's under carry or spread or anchor, and I don't see it. So I'm going to tell you what is going on with this verb. So there are certain verbs in Tlingit where I think of them as something that happens but requires a whole set of little repetitive motions, like combing your hair. So because of that, it gets this KW a lot like the you do a sock Yay do a sock one. But what happens is if you had this verb, so you could say shakau, oops, zi, ya. So this is they combed their hair. But if we're saying they're doing it right now, there's a couple things that happen. This classifier goes to, not to the plus i, but back to its state of just being an s. We're going to add a kw on there. But now here comes an important rule with putting suffixes onto verb stems. Any verb stem that ends with two A's. It's open and it ends with two A's. If you close it, they will change to E-I. This is just something that happens when you close that double A. So anything, ya, ta, any of them, they will switch to the E-I. Another one that does something similar, so you'd say, uh, does anybody know this verb, outliqub? 
So that would be they wiped it or mopped it. But if we put this into, um, oh, here, let's do this one. No, we'll, we'll stick with that. If we're going to say this is happening right now, ya anar wain. So if you put, if you close a verb root that ends with the double O, that will switch to W E I. It's an unusual thing, but it, it's very consistent, right? So same with, you say, Ausaku ya anasquain. They know it, they're getting to know it. That's why you say, ya uh, anasquaini for a student. So that is combing their hair right now. What about the next sentence? She's going to go to town. She's going to go to town. So on ka day, or on cut, or on ka is usually to town, downtown, uh, but on kade kukwagut, uh, or kukwagut in this case, uh, they are going to go to town. Any questions about those? Is that yeah. Is that the progressive imperfective? It's an Im it's just an imperfective. It was, if it was progressive, you would expect there to be ya in the front. And there'd be an N. Then you, whoops, you should have, you'd probably have something like that, and it would probably close with an N. Okay. I um, was following when you changed from the plus I classifier to the minus I classifier the the DZI to the S, but I did not understand the sorcery that happened after that. Yeah. So uh, the classifier, yeah, like you add that I component to say it did happen, right? That's the biggest thing. This one is plus D, so it's going to be Z or S because this has to do with combing your own hair. Right? So when it, when you do something to yourself, that's usually a plus D verb. Okay. But a lot of verbs, you can add a repetitive suffix to them. Uh, we'll just go find some that I, that I think have them already. Like, uh, I don't think this one's there. But let's say, oh, we're just looking at one today. To tear something or to peel bark off of a tree. So we're going to look at eight. And um, this one. So you see, it gets this little T at the end. So it's a T or a K. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why there is a difference between those two. I'm sure there's some logic behind it. But there are certain things when they happen, when what we call the imperfective, which means it's happening right now. And especially if they are act verbs, which is someone to do something to someone, there's some of them where even though it's happening right now, it's a series of kind of small related motions that make up this bigger action. That seems to me how it works. So this one, you add a T to it. Uh, there's another one, uh, Hajj, which is, uh, let me find it. Or is it hij to club something and to club it on the head? Oh, that one isn't there. Okay. But so sometimes you're going to get this repetitive thing, which means it's something that's happening now, but it's like a series of things that happens. But if you ever close a verb, like we'll look up ta. So ta is a verb for sleep, 
it ends with these two A's, right? T-A-A. -A. That is the verb uh, root, to sleep. So we look through and we get nata, go to sleep. Ta, sleeping. Kesh uta, not sleeping. Wuta, slept. Kesh uta, didn't sleep. Gukata, going to sleep. Kesh kukata, not going to sleep. Nakata, let them sleep. When you close it with this ch, it must switch over to a. That's where you get natej. Kesh unatej. Natini, teh. And it's a tricky thing, because especially if you hear this verb and you're like, okay, well, I need to go look that up. And you look it up and it doesn't exist, but it could be because the vowel in it changed. The AA and the OO are the ones that will do that, if they're open, right? So for example, we'll look up, uh, we'll see if goo is in here for swimming. Uh, no. Okay. Let's go back to the verb dictionary. So, in Tlingit, there's like 30 verbs for swimming. All kinds of swimming, all kinds of things that swim. Yawagu is for a fleet of boats to travel or for a pod or group of sea mammals to swim together. So here we have keet Yawaku, the killer whales were swimming. You, there's a song that goes, Ya, ye, ya, ya, na, kwe, na, he, de, ki, te, he, te, ha, he, he, ya, ha, ye, sta, de, ha, a, ya, ye, ya, ya, na, gwen. Keet Yanagwain. These killer whales are swimming right now. So if a verb ends with a ah, and you close it with a suffix, it's going to become a. If a verb ends with oo and you close it, it's going to become way. It's just an unusual thing that does happen. Uh, and I, I think the way to start thinking about it now is I looked up this verb. I don't see anything for that verb, but then you determine that it's ah. And so if you look up yek and you don't see anything, look up ya and see if you could find it. Okay, sheesh. I'll see one more, and then we'll take a break. Rogwagut, is that specifically to go on foot or does or is that it's generally going, but it's specifically walking. Walking. Yep. And this is the third person future. They are going to. Anybody want to read these two? Hi. Jinda usk du Dutch Han at Guguaha. Jinda usk du, oh, everybody. Jinda usk du Dutch Han. Jinda usk du Dutch Han at Guguaha. What do we got for the first one? Hand is gin or fingers? Hand, yeah. So gin is either hand or this part of the arm. It's usually hand, but it could be either one. And the da would be the position or the... This would, this would be, the whole thing is the verb. And so this is the verb root. So this will be the classifier. And we'll take a look at, we'll take a look at those again. Let's jump over this part so we get ourselves down to the root. Huh? Is washing. Right? Yes. Dutch uh, hung. He, she, grandson. Yes. Their grandchild 
is washing their hands. Kinder Usk. This is another one that gets this. Yeah, you know, we'll go look at this again. And the, there's a series of things that Shingit just requires you to remember. It's one of those ones that gets that suffix when you put it in the imperfective, which means it's happening right now. So we're going to look up usk. And this is to wash. And so in this case, um, well, it's pretty close to this one. We'll just look at washing hair for a second. We comb the hair, so now we're going to wash the hair. Shinda us is wash your hair. Shechadda usk, I am washing my hair. Shadda usk. So what we did here is we traded the sha, which is a head, for jin, which is the hand. You could say, do jin a usk. You could say that as well. Or you could say, jin de usk. This one has two options. You could build the body part right into the verb, or you could just say the body part and then use, you would go up and use this one, which would be a usk. Okay. Uh, would that be a matter of speaker preference or regional dialect or? It's a good question. I think this is one where it's probably okay either way. We we're just talking about this and we're talking about this today because we're doing little, we're getting the language nest. So that's something else I said at the beginning of class was the language nest is going to open their doors in a couple of months. So we're doing some work to get them ready and it's exciting. The little babies are coming back in to the language mess. And we're talking, should we teach them ijin na'uz, which is wash your hands, or should we teach them jin uh, which is also wash your hands. They're both totally fine. I think this is one, technically ijin na'uz is saying wash your hands, jin would be wash your own hands specifying that these are your own hands. Not that if it's kind of built into both of them, but this is sort of a, kind of a pretty fine point whether you can do one or the other. But we thought it was interesting that you don't talk about hair because you could build, you could put something right onto a verb. Sha is a head. Da is a body. But you could ha is the thing you could put on for hair. But I think it's too weird to say shechata us. Hune, on the other form of the verb, when you say do jin, do you keep the ah? Yes. Okay. So, because I know it's it, so do you, so even when you name the body part, you would keep the it? Yes, because it goes, that thing, like those pronouns don't go away. Like you'd say, he's washing it, He's washing the cup. But then Shingit, you'd say, it, they, wash, it, they, wash. Go ahead and name it. It doesn't change the verb at all. Gucha a usk. Du jin du a usk. Du, du teeth, du teeth a usk. They could wash anything, and you're still going to get this ah on there because it's it in this case. Good questions. Is is there a common time where this k or k ends up as a suffix? Yes. It, for me, it seems like it comes with things that happen on a regular. It seems like it's something that either happens regularly, or it's something that's happening that's a whole bunch of little motions. And I think it just describes that kind of stuff. It's got a bunch of suffixes for kind of for things like that to say, yeah, it's happening now, but it's also this series of things that is this a bunch of little motions put together. What about at uh, She will eat it or uh, they will eat it. Yes, they will. Uh, however, the at in front of this one. 
there's a couple of these that do this. When you put um, uh, something, is it something? Yes. And so in this case, it makes it into they're going to eat. So if you if you had they're going to eat it, you would say akwaha. And so there's the it again, as opposed to at. This is one where at changes it from eating it to eat. Right? So for example, if we already know what I'm going to go eat, like if someone said, hey, there's a smoked turkey leg right next door. So, <laughs> I'm going to eat it. But if they said, hey, it's break time. You're going to, you hungry? I'm going to eat. So for Tlingit, there's this important sort of difference about whether or not there is an object there. Sometimes something will lock up that spot and change the meaning a little bit. But like another example would be if you said khwadna I drank it. That's just me I drank it like if it was water, juice, whatever. But if you said at khwadna it literally is, is I drank something. But most people would assume it was alcohol. I don't know why. That one just sometimes the at does a little bit of special stuff. Wait, are so good. Yeah, wait, so can you? Sorry, I was I, I was following that, but now I'm just trying to keep them straight. So the one that's written that means they are going to eat, okay. and there's no there's no object there, so they're just they're going to eat. That's all it says. And Dutch Khan, what was the, um, the, the, the meaning there? Uh, grandchild. Okay, well, we're about one fourth of the way through this little book. We're just going to keep pushing through it all through the semester. We can keep going. Uh, I think we should take a break and then we'll come back and look at the suffix, the possessive suffix again. Right? We just keep unpacking some things. Uh, and I think this little reader, it shows us really useful phrases. It also shows us some things like there's parts that we can get, like we can get this. And sometimes we know, okay, washing, hands, grandchild. And so sometimes you got to sort of piece it together. And the more you do this, you start to sort of recognize what these things are doing. And especially because Slingit, it just smashes so many things together too. And it has so many rules about how things change. And so... Um, that's why I really like this because it gives us so much stuff to look at and talk about. Okay, uh, come back at seven o'clock. Sheesh. Sheesh. Okay, you guys want to do more sentences or you want to do the possessive suffix? Possessives. Let's go. Ach to at. Okay. So it all comes back to this chart. Right? So again, we're looking at whether things end with vowels, we're looking at whether things end with consonants. Uh, they don't have to be long. I don't know why I wrote them on this long. So the basics, I'd say step one to think of like the default is a letter I. That's the possessive suffix. So as far as some of the things with klingit is if you said like cup and then you said his, his cup, or if you said cup, Lance, Lance's cup, right? Dog's bone, whatever the thing is. And klingit, the possessive marker goes on the one who owns it, right? That's Susie's pen. Klingit puts the possessive marker on the thing being possessed. Susie pens, Lance cups. Like that's, that's the way the grammar would work if it applied to the English sound system. So the possessive marker goes on the thing being possessed. 
That's the first thing. Second thing, it's going to be a letter I. That's your starting point. So you're like, okay, you throw an I on there. The tone will be the opposite of whatever's before it. It's got to go high, low, low, high, hitty, nehli. Okay, there's step two, is the tone. Step three, if it's open, so if it doesn't end with a consonant, it ends with a vowel, it's going to be Y I. Ach tee. Ach ayi. Now, if it has a rounded ending, instead of an I, it's going to shift to a U. So if you have yak, you'll have yagu. And if it is, so if it ends with a W, that usually means it's a rounded ending. If you look at the end of the word and there's a W on there, that's a rounded ending. There are a couple of words that have a secret kind of a hidden rounded ending. It just happens. There's not that many of them. However, any U vowel, uh, uh, ooh, ooh, oh, oh, any of those, followed by any type of G or K or X, all the underlying, apostrophe, whatever, those will always be rounded. O, O, K, U, X, O, O, underline G, those will always be rounded endings. If it ends with any of these, C, H, K, underline K, T, T, L, T, S, it will move to a voiced pair. They're like these pairs. CH becomes a J. K becomes a G. Underline K becomes an underline G. T becomes a D. TL becomes DL. TS becomes a DZ. So when we look at this stuff, that's a lot. But we'll start moving through some examples, and you'll see. And then we'll just take all these nouns from beginning Klingit and we're going to possess them if it makes sense to possess them. And we'll just use ach, even though these stuff it don't, it don't all belong to you. It's just a drill. Any questions before we go forward? Some of this stuff, I think it goes from abstract to it, it makes sense. It's a sound system that makes sense. It's slinked, so it's always got some complications to it. But it's usually just finding the easiest way to do the thing. So to start with, if it's mine, everybody say, ach, 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 If it's yours, i, If it's some third person, a singular they, it's theirs, du, du, du. Do. If it's ours, ha, 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 ha. If it's y'all's, ye, 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 ye. And if it's them alls, has do, has do, has do, has do. Us do. Us do. Ah, I do. Ah, I do. Ah, ye has do. Ah, ye has do. Ah, I do. Ah, I do. Ah, ye has do. Ah, ye has do. Ah, I do. Ah, ye has do. Ah, I do. Ah, ye has do. So we're going to use ah, but you can substitute any of these. Let's take a look at the first section. An open uh, noun that's going to get y at the end. So here we have sa. Everybody say it. Sa. 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 
Sayı. Sayı. Now you have a seal. Let's look at a closed one. Adding an eye. We're just going to add an eye right to the end. Everybody say, peace. 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 Ach, kisi. Ach, kisi. Ach, kisi. So again, Y I, it goes from low to high. Add the I, and this one goes from high to low. Always the opposite of what's before. Let's look at a rounded end. Okay? We have Gao. Gao. Ach, Gao. Gao. Ach, gawu. Ach, gawu. Let's look at a rounded end with a consonant. So this is when you say open, close, open, rounded, close, rounded, if you want to, right? All we're worried about is what is it going to become? Gah. Gah. Ach, gahu. Ach, gahu. Ach, gahu. Now we'll look at these. Any U vowel with any G, K, or X. Tanuch. 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 Look at you. You got a duck and a seal and a turtle and a bracelet, and a drum, really getting your collection going. The voice, the unvoiced to the voice pairs. These are the same sounds in Tlingit, but you turn your vocal cords on. Ch, j, k, g, k, k, t, d, k, gl, t, z. Because there's vowels on both sides, usually, it just makes sense to not, you know, it'd be too awkward to say, ach, chutz i. You have to kind of stop yourself. So it just switches over to that voiced form. Cheech. 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 Ach, cheech. Ach, cheech. Ach, cheech. E H to the J, opposite of the tone before. Hook. 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 Ah. Hooku. Ah. Hooku. Ah. Hooku. Ah. Hooku. Yuk. 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 Ah. You go. Heat. 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 Kitty. Kitty. Hoots. Hoots. Ah, hootsie. Ah, hootsie. Ah, hootsie. So there should be a disclaimer with this one. Chate chate u ya hoots kwani. So there's elders that I've worked with before who don't like to put bears into anything because we have so much respect for them. We don't even say their names when we go out into the woods. We just say, Yatsinate. But I just grabbed it because it, it just fits the pattern. So as long as we are aware, there are cultural laws regarding this particular animal. We talk to them before we even go into the woods. The way I've seen elders do this, they'd say, Hashik ohas. That's how they would refer to the bear, our ancestors. 
doesn't mean we're descended from bears, but it just means we give them that much respect. A kinship term is always showing a relationship to something. So we use this, uh, and so just be careful. Any questions about any of those? There are a couple of exceptions. Just a little additional rules if you flip this little card over, uh, the card being this set of rules right here that show us how this whole thing works. If it has a short high vowel, it will get pushed long and low. So te, te yi. This it's very common. It's very predictable. You'll see it in a lot of different spots. Also, if it's one of these things that ends with this ah, and it has this verb root right before it, shitta, chitta, chutta, una, dana, chasha, it will go short and low, all of them. Shitta yi, dana yi, chasha yi. It's just one that just breaks. It's like, he learned all those rules? Well, I don't care, because I do my own way. But it's just for those ones. Una, chitta, goina, all of those. Okay? Now. Uh, in that case, the tone on the possessive suffix is the same as the syllable before? Yes. Well, it's just everything goes flat. So then it breaks... It breaks that tone rule. It's just one of those things to remember. We learn those ones. What's the one to make it little? Which suffix do we use to make it little? Ka. Yeah, the k, that K apostrophe. And what about plural? X apostrophe. So you can have the relational suffix that shows possession and either one of those. So for example, uh, but this is the order. That X or K comes first, then you get the possessive suffix. Just like on yetki. That's the rules in action. Once you sort of learn this rule, you, you'll see it all over the place now. Look at place names. You'll see it all over the place in place names. Let's say you have a little tiny bracelet. Kisk. Kisk. Now say you've got this fleet of killer whales for whatever reason. Just an exercise. Keet. Keet. The little plurals would stay the same because it already it just has the suffix already on there. So you couldn't say ah kuk kusana yi. Just wouldn't wouldn't make sense. Ah kuk kusan my little boxes. Any question? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start rolling through the nouns. I'd like us to all try it. Okay? We'll just sort of don't sit on your hands, just give it a try. If it's not the correct way, it's fine. We'll take a look at it and we'll see how these rules apply on the fly. I'd like us to go one at a time and each try it uh, to review. Ah, I, du, ha, ye, has, du. In this case, we're just, everything's going to be mine. You can own it all. It's greedy time. It's greedy time. Mine. It's just for practice. Kune. Ah. Which is it? I don't know if it was in the book or basically you're going to the U instead of an I because the sound you're making before that is already going in this direction, right? That your lips, right, are, want to go to an, an U because of the rounded or like, right. whereas the other ones, it's just, it's easier to, do, I mean, would you say that's generally kind of what's going on? Yeah, so if, if we took a look, I'm going to take my mask off here for a second. So if, oh, hold on, this guy, 
duplicate. Okay. So if if we had these two endings, oops. So if we had a word that ended with a a y, you go i, and to make this y sound, you kind of go into a smile i. To make this w sound, you go into kind of a fish lips kissy face thing. Ow. Oh. So it's either that's rounded and that's sort of pulling back. So let's say if you're already up there and then these match up with this e. So you've got you've got to make that kind of smiley face and then you've got uh, in this case ooh. So that's a rounded sound. So the vowels themselves match up to being rounded and not rounded. E, ooh, e, ooh. So the mechanics of it is if you're already sort of in the back of the mouth, just stay in the back of the mouth to put the suffix on there. If you're in the front of the mouth, stay in the front of the mouth. Or else it gets it just gets too awkward to say to go ooh e or to go if you were to go e su. So you have to go to a different part of your mouth. So the, the key is just saying like, I like to think of it as there's these two main vowels and when it comes to showing this relationship, i and u, and they do the same thing. It's just make one of those sounds, depending on if your mouth is already there, keep it there. Gosh, geez, is there something, like I'm trying to get these patterns of like, okay, when all else fails, think practically. Is there something the same way with the like te, te, yi? Is there something like the rhythm or anything else for these certain rules that they came to be because of, you know, I was just curious if there's anything there that I could grab onto rather than just trying to memorize all these rules. Well, I, I think a short high vowel is just not, it's almost like it's just by itself and so it's going to get drugged down. If there's two, if there's like two of them, they're strong. But if there's just one of them, it'll get, it's like it's going to get pulled down flat a little bit. Yeah, good, good question. And if you folks think of something like there is, and it's a crazy set of rules, but once we start going through, like you'll see it, it, it makes sense that it's going to be the sound, right? But there's a whole bunch of stuff, I think, in Tlingit. When we talk about it, just how it works, it's very abstract. But then when we start just sort of doing it, we're like, okay, if I keep doing this, I'm going to start to get the patterns and, and it'll, it should, I'm going to find the fastest way to get to the i or the u sound, which is really what you're trying to do. So someone tell me what this is called and whoever tells me what it's called, you're going to also tell me how to say my thing. <laughs> uh, um, pick yadi. It's the thread. Yeah, take your We're going to say, we'll say tuss. Okay. Tuss. Now say my thread. Ach, tussi e? Ach, tussi. You only need that one. Ach, tussi. Okay, it's, tussi. It ends with the consonant. Throw an I on there. Ach, tussi. Now you got some thread in your drawer. Uh, this? Shawat? Yeah, oh, wait. Shawat. And Shawat. is it mine? Ach, shaw, shawati. Yes, but this one has the T at the end. Oh. So that must go to? Uh, the. Ach, shawati. Uh, and so that, that's not like, I own this woman. It's just like, it's a. I would probably assume that you folks are a couple. That's usually like, it's my lady, it's my man. So ka would be a kawu. So this is one that has one of those hidden rounded end endings. I don't know, you just gotta remember. A kawu, a shawati. Nobody owns anybody, it's just. What's that thing, that big body of water there? Ah. Uh. Yeah, away. Ah. Uh. 
And uh, this is your lake. You can have it if you can say it. Ach, ay. Ach, ay. Right? So it stays. Uh, yeah. Hide alone. Hide alone. Ach, ay. What's this one? Te. 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 Yeah, away. Te. And how do you make it yours? Ach, te. Ach, te. Ye. Te. Ye. It's flat. Goes from goes from short high to long low. What's this thing called? Is it Sate? Sate. And it's mine. Ach Sadi. Sadi, right? Low to high, T to a D. Both of those, it's like this set of rules, and you'll just see it. You'll see it, you'll see it, you'll see it. What's this thing? Ach, hitty. Well, it's a hit. We'll do, we'll do the noun. Sorry. But yes, hit and ach, hitty, right? All these, a whole bunch of clan houses. Not all of them have it. Some of them are just yeah, hit. Well, I guess they all have. But if you're going to name stuff, something hitty, a tra daka hitty, hoon daka hitty, you'll just you see them and this like, Looking at these rules, I think it's very strange, and you're like, okay, there's this thing, but that thing, and then this thing, that, but then once you see them in action, I think it does make sense, makes sense to me, anyways. We gotta do our rodent family test. Da da. Uh, Nuxian. Yeah, away. Nuxian or Nuxian. Before we do the possessed version, this is in the Raven stories. This is the one who went down and got the sea urchins for Raven when he was trying to go down the bulk hill. And then other versions of the story he carried around later and pretended he was the mother and it was his baby. But he did it just to trick people. So if that's mine, you would say what? Nukshiyani. Ah, Get away. So nothing changes. It just gets that I attached right to the end. What's this one? Good. Good. Or could. And if it's mine. Ach, good day. Ach, good day. Good day. <laughs> good day, right? So again, like that, that vowel shouldn't get changed, right? So it's only E where it went, it would go to EI. That's the only short vowel that gets that long. Well, if it were to end, if the ending was G, then it would go to GU. But the ending is GUT. Oh, okay. So that's a it's a vowel ending, a short high vowel ending. Mm -hmm. yes. Good question. Now we got a dime. As are loading up on stuff. What's this? Una. 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 Here comes one of our exceptions. Don't get the tone right. There's no deer for you this season. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Does it go E I or Una Ye? Una Ye. Una Ye. Una Ye. All of these Una, Sitta, Guasha, all of those that are the thing that something. Right? So this this structure is this. There's a verb root to shoot. And then this is a, another pronoun that means the one or the ones, or some of them, depends how it's being used. So in these constructions, we get una, the one that shoots, hita, the one that slides, uh, hita, the one that sweeps, uh, husha, the one that saws. And that's the thing, that ah is the thing that it gets shortened. 
It's a real breaker. So mountain would be then, if I was to say my mountain, it would be ach shay. Would I be? But that one, that's not one of those. Usually these are two syllable things. You'd say ach shay. Do they usually have a high tone on the first syllable? Yes, they usually do. There might be a couple that reverse it for some reason. But yeah, that's a good, good question. And a lot of times they're short, although una is not. Chuta, chita, chita, tia, those ones are all short. What's this thing? Yai. Yai. And if it's yours, congratulations. Better feed that thing a lot of herring. Ach yai. Right? So again, just add the add the eye opposite the tone before it. Little fish exam. What's this? Ya. 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 Yow. If it's mine or yours. Yow. It's got a rounded ending. Ach, yow. Right? Yow. Gow. They're all going to follow the same set of rules. And I'm going to skip that one. A fort. No. no. You. And if it's yours? <laughs> so it must be new. New. You'll see this in a bunch of place names. Hoots plus new becomes Hoots new. It's the name of Admiralty Island, Fortress of the Brown Bear. What's this thing called? Yana eight. Yana eight. And if it's mine? Ach Yana edi. Ach Yana edi. For this one, think of all those clans that end with edi, dakta wedi, shangu kedi. All of them are using this same set of rules. You have adi, kukach adi, kuknach adi. They are all following the same set of rules. The eighty part usually comes about because you have some vowel plus at plus i. That's going to get you to eighty. There's there's just an a uh vowel plus an a uh vowel. Usually you get an a sound. It's just you get this a uh to the a. Just like we looked at that vowel or that verb stem a little while ago. Uh, is the ut related to ut on the front end of verbs? Yes, it's the same, it's the same thing, but a different pronoun. And it, does it mean something? Yes, so that ut means thing. Yes, a thing. So uh, when you see it built into a noun or a clan name, it means the thing. So like Hukach Adi means the thing of Hukach, which is a and you usually get a place name. So there's a place called Dak Cleo, which becomes Dak Cleo. There's a place called Ka Nach. So you get Ka Nach Adi. There's a place called Ka Nach Te, which gives you Ka Nach Te Di. There's a place called Kix, and you get Kix Adi. And you go on and on through all the clans. And so like this, it's like a little tool that unlocks all these things. And you'll start to see all these parts all over the place. And we'll pick up here on Thursday. And I think some of these things, like when you look at the rules and it seems super complicated, but once you start putting it in practice while you're looking for it, it starts to make sense, I think. Okay, okay. Oh, cheese. Ah.
Yn y chis. Yn y chis. Get a dog din. Get a dog din. Yn y chis. 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 Yn which one? The story that we did um, with all the different intermediate, beginner, and advanced. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is. Because uh, I, I, was, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it on the. Did I? Did I put that on that site? I don't remember if I did. Hold on. Uh, it's on advanced clinket. Okay. Yeah, yeah we all met. So I just put it under advanced clinket. Oh, yeah. If you scroll down uh, to when we all. Uh, what about the video? So it's up. I yeah, also. No okay. Yeah. I will add that. Right here. Okay. I will link to that. Uh, if you look at this logo, wait, let me stop the record.